Hey guys, welcome to TST Garage. I'm Bart, and today in this video, I'll be showing you how to install the TST Industries brake light modulator on your bike. Now, a brake light modulator, sometimes called a strobe, sometimes called a brake light flasher, what it does is basically enables you to install some electronics on your bike so that when you press your brakes, the brake light flashes in some kind of pattern and alerts the drivers behind you that you will be stopping. Our particular brake light modulator comes pre-wired to a plug that interfaces with a sub-harness that we provide specific to your bike model that enables plug-and-play functionality with your bike. So that means that the installation is really fast and uh, you can do it yourself. Now the electronics inside, we do have the ability for you to program this unit to three different functions and then subsequently adjust the rate of the effect to your liking. Our first programmable mode is strobe alert. This mode will produce nine flashes and then stay solid for the duration of the brake engagement. Second one is intermittent pulser. Each cycle will flash 10 times and then pause. And then these cycles will repeat for the duration of the brake engagement. The last available option is pulser. And this one just basically provides continuous flashing for the duration of the brake engagement. Now we will show you how to install this. It's really simple. And then after the installation chunk, I will show you in detail how to get inside here, how to program the different modes and how to alter the rate of those different modes. We did think about the safety of such devices during the design phase. So we decided to design this in a way that it will be a pass-through component in case you experience a failure on board here, it will just pass through your normal brake function, which means you press your brake, your brake light lights up, there's just no effect. In case you do experience that failure, we do offer a warranty. So we have guys standing by in our support department that will take your call, email, Facebook message, whatever, and we'll get you replaced. And that's pretty much it. I'm really excited to show you guys just how easy this is to put on and configure. So let's get started. Now to begin this installation process, we will remove our passenger seat or seat cowl, depending on whatever equipment you have on your bike. And we will have our TST brake light modulator and subsequent plug and play harness readily available. And now for this next step, we are going to be focusing on this white connector coming from the tail light with the cables routed underneath this keeper. This is the main tail light connector. It also matches up with the connector on our modulator harness. So there's a small tab located on the upper portion of this connector. The bike side of the harness is secured into the sub tray with a friction fastener. You can pry up on this. I would be very gentle with it as it may break or if you have enough patience, you can actually unlock it from here using a small tool like this uh, flathead or like this pick here. And we will simply press down on the tab while simultaneously pulling towards the rear of the bike. And you can see here, we have freed it from the connector. And what I was re referring to is this tab right here you press it down to disengage this notched security tab from interlocking with the face on this white connector here. Now, we will go ahead and connect our harness to our brake light modulator. This connector only goes in one orientation. And now we can go ahead and connect one side to the OEM connector on the tail light and the opposite end will be connected onto the bike side of the harness. And Yamaha did make it a little difficult to work in this connector space. So if you are able to remove it from the sub tray, I would highly recommend doing so. Now, before we go ahead and secure this with the provided zip ties, we do want to go ahead and check our work. So we'll turn the bike into accessory mode. You can see the brake light is on or the running light is on. And when I activate the brakes, you could see we now have our brake 
flashing. So let's go ahead and power the bike down. And now we do include two zip ties. And you can see here we have a notch feature on our brake light modulator housing to secure it. And on this particular model, you do have a few options. We always recommend securing it in place. And I think on this particular model, the best bet is actually right underneath this subframe brace. And we're only gonna use one zip tie for now that will suffice. We will begin to secure this in place by lining the notch up with our zip tie and then feeding it through. Now, we do want this, if you are going to go with this location, you do want to make sure that you are far enough towards the center of the bike so that this zip tie does not interfere with the hook feature underneath your passenger seat or rear seat cowl. And at this position right here, this is a perfect spot that will avoid any, any interference. So we'll go ahead and just make sure we're nice and secured. We'll cut off the excess here. There we are. And now you can begin reinstalling your passenger seat or seat cowl. And just like that, this installation is now complete. For mode selection and rate adjustment, we will need to get inside this capsule to access the electronics. These two Phillips head screws will need to be removed. What I like to do is unscrew them until they disengage from their receiving threads and leave them in the cap. Otherwise, it's pretty easy to lose them. If we pull them off with the cap, they are self-captive. All right, now we'll identify the parts here. This button is the mode selector and this potentiometer is your rate adjuster. Clockwise is faster, counterclockwise is slower. Let's first do our selection of modes. With the brake pressed, press the button once to toggle to the next available program. Now the brake does have to be pressed so that the unit powers up, otherwise you won't be able to make the selection. If you find that you've pressed the button, but the selection has not been changed, just do it again with the brake pressed. So now we will go on to the next program, press the brake once more, press the button once, and now you're in the next mode. Now we've switched twice, so pressing it one more time will return to the original mode that your unit arrived in. Now for rate adjustment, we'll be using the potentiometer. With the brake pressed, we can turn it clockwise to make it go faster, counterclockwise to decrease the rate. Now in brake alert, you will only have nine flashes to make your adjustment and then it'll stay solid. This one doesn't actually lend itself to really fast flashing at the top of the range. Bottom of the range is unusable. So I like to set it somewhere towards three quarters to maybe 80% clockwise. And that does it for me. Now if we change to the next one, this one is pulser and this one just keeps on flashing so I like to have it going pretty fast here choice is really up to you if you want to explore the next mode we have the intermittent pulser this one to me belongs somewhere close to the top of the range makes it the most visible but again freedom means choice the decision is ultimately up to you once you're done with your adjustment and you're where you want to be with all your modes and rates, replace the cap, turn the screws back in, and it really is just that simple. Replace your brake light modulator in the space that you just decided to keep it, and you're good to go.